Hi, I'm Kaylee Gaston and you're watching Crash Course Literature. Today we are going to be discussing Ceremony by Leslie Marmon Silco. Today's episode also includes guest appearances from people all around the world just giving their insight about the novel. And we even have a surprise appearance by Leslie herself. Miss G, Miss G, isn't this the book only about ghost sex and vomit? Well, no. Although there are strange happenings in this book, such as relations with non-existent women and constant vomiting, there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, here's Matt Sanchez from Miami, Florida, to tell you all about it. Go ahead, Matt. Teo is sick when he returns to Laguna Pueblo from World War II. He is suffering from post-traumatic stress and grief from the death of his brother Rocky and his uncle Josiah. He also feels guilty of the six-year drought which he feels happened because of his prayers against the rain when he was in the Philippines. He is with his family who has raised him, since his real mother had left him at the age of four. He has developed a drinking problem since he has been around his childhood and war buddies. He has a conflict with Emo, a fellow war veteran, who dislikes him because Teo is half-white. He gets help from some medicine men who perform ceremonies on him. Throughout his journey of ceremonies, Teo recalls memories of the past, and he ends up going on a search for his uncle's cattle and a cure for himself. Thank you, Matt. That was a great summary, but to truly understand the book, we're going to have to dive a little deeper into the context. Here's Andy Spencer from Des Moines, Iowa with Symbols, Themes, and Motifs. All right, guys, let's get right to it. Themes, Motifs, and Symbols of the book Ceremony. All right, Symbols, we're going to start straight off with the cattle. The white, when the white people have the cattle, they're seen as useless, they're weak and tiny, and they're just untamed wild animals that are just horrible to provide for. They're creatures of the wild, and they cannot be caged. This can be seen as a representation of the Native American people who want to be free from the white people, who wants to gain back their own culture, to refuse to have this assimilation occur and they want to be free they want to be wild they want to do their own thing and just have the white people respect that and appreciate that without appropriating it um now on to the motifs okay so there are two motifs in this book the first one is considered a non-linear narrative structure what silco does is reflect the way that the pueblo people rep see time they don't see it as, you know, linear in how things happen in the course of time, but how important they are. They see it as kind of like a circle. Uh, so instead of, like, Teo was born, Teo grew up, Teo went to war, Teo went through the ceremony. Instead of what they do um, is Silco goes back and forth. Also, it can connect to one another, so everything kind of flows in one sort of circle rather than just a line. Uh, the other motif is the combination of both prose and poetry. The poetry is seen as more the Native American side uh, for the communal rhythmic storytelling uh, side of it. However, the prose is more of the white Western culture, which symbolizes Teo himself because he is both Native American and white. Um, this, what it does is asserts that the content of the story is the bleeding of the two cultures um, Teo's story is a more modern and a little bit more western version of the poems that Silco um, has got together and so you have Teo's side and the poetry side and it's the same story just told in two different ways so you can see the bleeding of the two cultures and how they work together uh, it's basically a western form of storytelling uh, contained inside a Native American story which is really interesting I think that was perfect, Annie. Does anyone have any more questions? Isn't this book only about Indians? Well, we just explained. Were you not paying attention at all? Not only was the plot explained, but we went in depth with everything. Are you freaking kidding me? Sorry everyone, we're experiencing some technical difficulties right now. Here's Sarah from Paducah, Kentucky to tell you about the author. Let me give you a little bit of background on the writer. 
Leslie is a Laguna Pueblo and was born on March 5th of 1948 and graduated from the University of New Mexico. She is a member of the Native American Renaissance Literary Movement and has received many awards for her writing, such as the MacArthur Fellowship Award, the Landon Literary Award for Fiction, and the American Book Award, which she won specifically for Ceremony. Ceremony was written by Silco while she locked herself away in a cabin in the mountains of Alaska. Talk about commitment. The book was given several high reviews, and one of the most noteworthy was given by Charmin Alexi, who called Ceremony his favorite work of Native American literature. This book won't let you down. Thank you so much for having me, and as always, have a great day. I apologize for that <clears throat> outburst, but... After a lot of consideration, I realized that the only way for you to truly understand the depth of this novel is by speaking with Leslie herself. And here she is. Hi, Leslie. How are you? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Now, let's get down to business. What made you write Ceremony? Yeah, I um, I had a book contract to write either a collection of short stories or a novel, and this was back in 1973, so I was, what, um, 25 or 26 years old, so I left northern Arizona, and I went with my then-husband, John Sulco, to Ketchikan, Alaska, which was his hometown, and so in the summer of 1973, there I was on that island, and I had this book contract to write short story stories but um my health wasn't good and uh so i struggled to settle in and write and after some months i found an attorney there in ketchikan uh richard whitaker gave me this office space and i went down and i started working on what i thought would be a short story and it was supposed to be about the character harley uh the one who's a terrible alcoholic and so i meant for it to be a short story but as it rained and rained outside i came working with um the material and the character Tayo came in and um, that led me to think back to my own childhood and I, I wondered about my relatives who came back from World War II why some of my cousins were okay um, my, my father was relatively okay but some of the others weren't and then I realized that all my life I had wondered what had happened to them and so I realized that this wasn't going to be a short story and it kind of got longer and longer and became more about Dio and um, not about Harley. And I was having bad migraine, um, headaches, and terrible nausea, and in a sense I was in the same kind of poor condition that my character Dio was in in the beginning of the novel, but then I um, gradually as I started working on the novel um, I noticed I was starting to feel better. Of course uh, part of that was because for me Writing is a wonderful way to transcend place and time, and it also helped me to recover, in a sense. Uh, so about a third of the way through, I realized that the very act of writing this novel was kind of a healing act for me. And, of course, I had just recently come from Navajo country, where they call those ceremonial rituals uh, ceremonies. And in Navajo country, if you're sick or there's something wrong, they'll always say, well, you know, um, what you need is a good ceremony. And um, it was through that realization when I was um, about a quarter of the way or a, a third of the way through the novel that I realized for me, um, the very act of writing the novel was helping me. And so I often tell my students that I wrote that book to save my life, in a sense. That is truly inspiring. Thank you so much for joining us, Leslie, but I'm afraid that's all the time that we have today. Please join us next week when we dissect the missionary position, Mother Teresa in theory and in practice, written by Christopher Hitchens.